This is the Unit 4 seminar for MCR3U. This is part one of the seminar. Today we'll be covering both arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. Let's move this to a full screen view. And these concepts, even though they are brand new concepts, they're going to be very important if you continue to study business or mathematics because geometric sequences especially are the key to the con basic concepts for financial mathematics. So let's get started. For arithmetic sequences, actually for 6.1 in your guide, um, that really relates to what you did in elementary school, generating a formula by analyzing patterns. And arithmetic sequences takes a specific patterns. So the definition is a sequence of numbers that follow a pattern by adding a fixed number from one term to the next. And the fixed difference between successive terms is the key to identifying arithmetic sequences. So here's a number of sequences, and we need to identify whether or not they're arithmetic. And if so, you have to identify the patterns. This is basically what you are going to be doing in 6.1. So for sequence number A, the difference between each term, if we take 5 and add the number 3, that will give us the second term of the sequence. If we take 8 and add another 3, we're going to get 11. Add another 3, you get 14, and so on. For sequence number 3, even though the numbers are decreasing, what that means is that we're actually adding the number negative 2. So 20 plus negative 2 gives us 18. 18 plus negative 2 is 16. 16 plus negative 2 is 14. So sequence number C is very important because it illustrates that you can have an arithmetic sequence that decreases in value with each successive term. Now the main way of identifying a sequence algebraically is the formula t4 minus t3 should be equal to t3 minus t2 which should be equal to t2 minus t1. That basically means the fourth term, the difference between the fourth and the third term should be the same as the difference between the third and the second term, which should also be the same as the third and the first, sorry, the second and the first term. Now we are going to actually create a formal definition, a formal formula that illustrates all arithmetic sequences. And in this formula, we're going to have certain number of variables that mean specific things. The A term, whenever you see A when you're talking about arithmetic and geometric sequences, the A represents the first term in the sequence. And the common difference is always represented by the variable D for arithmetic sequences. Now this is the formal definition that you get in your textbook, but the formula that you have to memorize is the one at the bottom of the screen. Tn is equal to a plus n minus 1d. And that is the formula that we're going to be applying to numerous different scenarios in this unit guide. Now we're just going to have a quick review before we use that formula and apply it to specific situations. First of all, in grade 10, or actually in grade 9, we learned that whenever you have common differences that are the same, where the first differences are the same, that type of situation will always generate a linear function. In grade 10, we learned if the second differences are the same, this generates a function, a quadratic function. Because arithmetic sequences uh, applies to the concept of a common difference, we know that because all the first differences would be the same, so this formula illustrates a particular arithmetic sequence, then if we were to graph an arithmetic sequence, you're always going to have a relationship that is linear. 
a relationship that is linear. However, the terms in the sequence are separate. When we learned about linear functions in grade 9 and 10, every single term in between the points were also part of the function. So that's why we join the line. However, for arithmetic sequences, we're talking about specific terms. We're not talking about anything in between the first and the second term. We do never discuss a 1.5 term or a 2.5 term. That doesn't exist. So whenever you're asked to graph an arithmetic sequence on a test or in your assignments, you never ever join the line. Now, the first type of question that we're going to talk about is finding the general term formula using Tn is equal to a plus n minus 1d. Now, all, we already spoke about the fact that a represents my first term and d represents my common difference. And we're going to examine this particular sequence over here, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17. However, I do want to define one other component of this formula, and that's the concept of Tn. So Tn actually represents two different things, and this applies to both arithmetic and geometric sequences. First of all, uh, Tn represents our general term formula, so our general term formula, which we're going to come up with in this particular question. However, the reason why students have problems with um, arithmetic and geometric sequences is if you forget both types of defini definitions. So it doesn't just represent the general term formula, it also represents the value of your very last term in your sequence. So I'm going to try writing this here. The value of your last term. Now for this particular example, we uh, don't actually know the last term. So when it asks you to solve for Tn, when you don't know the value of the last term, we're going to use the first part of the definition, which is coming up with a general term formula. So we know that a is the very first term, so we're going to substitute 5 into my general term formula equation. I know that the common difference between terms, t2, 3 minus t2 is 3. t2 minus t1 also gives me a value of 3. So we're going to plug in the value 3 as a common difference. You have to always use the distributive property. So multiply 3 times n in order to get 3n, and then multiply 3 times negative 1 to get negative 3. And finally, combine like terms. So my general term formula, Tn, for this particular arithmetic sequence, Tn is equal to 3n plus 2. Now using this general term formula, I will be able to generate the first term, the second term, the third term, just by plugging in different values for n. So if I wanted to know the 15th term in the sequence, I would just plug in n is equal to 15 to figure out the 15th term. Now if we did this again, where, well, this is another question with a different type of sequence where a is equal to 5, d is equal to 4, and this gives me the general term formula tn is equal to 4n plus 1. The second type of problem that you'll be tested on for your unit 4 test is finding the number of terms. So this type of question is um, kind of a clue for this type of question, is when you're given the first couple of terms, and then a dot, 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 and then the value of the very last term. So for this question, I, Tn is going to represent the value of the last term, which is 495. In order to calculate the number of terms in a sequence, you have to be given two pieces of information. 
the value of your last term, which is my tn, as well as the first few terms in the sequence. The first few terms in the sequence are important so that we can calculate a and d. In this particular question, a is going to be equal to 3, and d is the common difference between t3, t2, t2, t1, and my common difference is going to be 12 for this particular question. So my step one is going to be finding the general term or using the general term formula to, um, to solve this question. So I have to find my general term formula. Tn is equal to 12n minus 9 after plugging in my value for a and my value for d. Just like the very first question, I'm generating my Tn formula. You're then going to use this Tn formula to solve for the number of terms in this sequence. So I know that my the value for Tn is 495. That's a value of the last term in the sequence. So instead of Tn, if we go just go back, Tn is equal to 12n minus 9. So I'm going to substitute 495 for my Tn and keep the right-hand side of the equation the same. Next, I'm going to move all the numbers over to one side. So the negative 9 moves over to one side. It becomes positive 9. That gives me 504 is equal to 12n. I want to get rid of the 12 in front of the n, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 12, and that gives me a final answer, n is equal to 42. That means that this sequence has 42 terms, 42 terms. And you can um, try this on your own for sequence number A sequence number C, and you should get the following answers. Notice that for both of these questions, we have a dot, dot, dot in the middle because we, have, we don't know how many terms are in that particular sequence. Okay, so let's just get out of this.